Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it this night, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We praise you for the fruit that will come forth as we are hearers and doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been sharing with you most recently on the subject of becoming continual doers of the Word of God. We talked about that on Sunday morning. We talked about what believers are to be doing according to the Word of God on Sunday evening. Tonight we're going to talk about the results of becoming a continual doer of the Word. And we saw that it is a command for us to be doers of the Word. James chapter 1 verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The word here where it says be ye is really a word in the Greek which means to become. We are to become doers of the word, showing that it is going to be through the word working in you, it will bring you to that place. And this is going to be an ongoing work in your life, present tense verb in the Greek, indicates the continuous repeated action of becoming a doer of the word. And it's an imperative mood, so it's a command. So God's going to accomplish this. You become a doer of the word, and you're going to carry on throughout your life. It is so important, because if you're not a doer of the word, but a hearer only, as it says, you deceive your own self. We don't want to deceive ourselves. We're to be doers of the word to see God accomplish all the things that he wants in our life. We talked about many principles on Sunday morning, things that are very important for us to be understanding, to become a doer of the Word, and the things that we're to do, as we talked about on Sunday evening. As we mentioned, tonight we're going to talk about the results, and they are very important for us in our life. It'll show you the importance of being a doer of the Word. We begin back in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Here we see... Verse 7, this is talking about Cain and Abel. And he's speaking here to Cain. And he says in verse 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And of course, he committed sin, and he was cursed because he did the wrong thing. Killed his brother, Abel. Notice, if you do well you're going to be accepted by God. If you do not do well, sin will be the line of the door. You'll be committing sin, and you'll see curses coming upon you. It is absolutely essential that we make the decision. We're going to be doers of God's word. Then we'll be accepted by the Lord, and we'll see his blessings come. If we don't, you'll be committing sin. Because if you don't do the word, you're going to do something else. When you commit sin, it will bring curses upon you. In Genesis chapter 18, in verse 19, it's speaking here of Abraham, and God's speaking about him, and he says in verse 19, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice, what is righteous, and according to the governing rules of justice, which is what this word means here, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Notice, God knew what Abraham was like. He would command his children, his household, to walk after the way of the word of God that he'd committed to follow. And he would keep the way of the Lord and do what was righteous and what was according to the governing rules of justice, what was right in the sight of the Lord. And notice what was going to be the result. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. That means it was a condition that had to be met if he was going to see Abraham bring forth the blessings in his life. It wasn't automatic just because God had said. Just as for us, the promises of all belong to us in Christ, but they're not automatic in our life. We have to meet the conditions. As we do it, he says, follow the way of the Lord, then God will be able to bring the blessings of God upon you in your life. They don't automatically come. They all depend on whether you follow the Lord and meet the conditions of the Lord. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. Doing the word is doing what is right in his sight. 
obeying the commandments is doing what's right in the sight. We'll give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Sickness is a curse that came upon them. God brings forth healing, which is a blessing. If you will do what is right in his sight and follow him and obey him, here's a promise for us that he will bring forth his healing. He is the Lord who will heal us. So we meet the conditions, God's healing will be available for us and we will see him bring it forth in our life. We see another place in Exodus chapter 19, verse 7. Moses came, called for the elders of the people, laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. That's what God expects of us, to respond and to do all the things that he says. If we'll do it, he'll bring his blessings upon us in our life. And when they were read, read, read all the things of the covenant in Exodus chapter 24, verse 3, where Moses came, told the people all the words of the Lord, all the judgments. Otherwise, here's the word of the Lord. You do them, you're going to be blessed. If not, you are going to see judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord has said, will we do. They committed to do it. And in verse 7, he took the book of the covenant. He read in the audience of the people so they'd hear all the blessings. And they'd also hear the curses if they didn't obey. And they said, all that the Lord has said, will we do and be obedient. If you and I will do and be obedient to what he says, we will see the blessings come upon us in our life. If we do not, then we will see curses come upon us. It's not God's will, but these th it will happen if we don't obey what he tells us to do. In Exodus chapter 23, we see in verse 20 and following, he said, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I prepared. You know, angels minister for us the heirs of salvation to bring forth the things that God purposes in our life. And it says, Beware of him and obey his voice, provoke him not. He will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And the angels were speaking the word of God to them in the Old Testament. So their voice that they spoke was they were delivering the word of God. Yeah, but at the same time, are they going to see their transgressions get pardoned? No. They're going to have to walk in line with the word. And look what he says in verse 22. If thou shalt indeed, shall indeed obey his voice, that'd be obeying the word of God, and do all that I speak, obeying the commandments, carrying out what the word of the Lord was, then I'll be an enemy to thy enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. God will be an enemy against your enemies, the devils, and an adversary against them. If you will walk in the ways of the Lord, he will be on your side and fight the battles against the enemies. We see over in Ezekiel chapter, or Exodus that is, Exodus chapter 36, verse 2. Another thing, a result of doing the word. Exodus 36, 2. Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab, every wise-hearted man in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. Everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. There was a work assigned to them. They were to come and do it. Their hearts stirred them up because they were committed to do what God had wanted. If you have a heart that is right before the Lord and you are committed to do those things that he wants, your heart will stir you up. You, God won't have to be getting after you. Your heart will stir you up to want to do the things that he wants. You know. We don't do things because we have to. There's no fruit in that. It's because we want to, because we're yielded unto the Lord. Those that have a heart that's right before God will always be ready to do the things that God wants them to do. In Leviticus chapter 20, down in verse 8, You shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. They're going to be sanctified, consecrated, made holy before the Lord. That's exactly what God will do in our life because we've been called to be holy. He's commanded us to be holy and called us to be holy as he is holy. If we'll keep his statutes and do them, be a doer of the word, the Lord, this is his covenant keeping name, uh, Jehovah, the one who is Kadesh, which is the one who, will, the Lord who will sanctify us. It's a covenant statement. 
He will bring this to pass in your life. If you do the word, God will bring forth his sanctification in you. We see another blessing, another result. Leviticus 25, verse 18. Wherefore, you shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. It means God will keep you safe. That's a promise of the word of God. He'll keep you protected and safe. We need that for, especially as we're going down these last days with the crazy violence and all the things that are going on in the world. And the evil men are going to wax worse and worse, as we know what the scripture says. So you do the word, he promises that he will keep you safe. Leviticus 26, verse 3. If you walk in my statutes, you keep my commandments and do them. There's the conditions. Then it starts listing all these great blessings that will come. I'll give you rain in due season. The land shall yield or increase. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Speaks of prosperity and fruitfulness coming forth. You and I are the type of the trees of the field. He'll bring forth great fruitfulness in our life. And they would all come to the sowing time, the vintage, and to the full. And so otherwise their, their, would, their fruit would come forth to f full measure. And they would dwell on the land safely. They'd have peace in the land. They'd lie down. None would make them afraid. He'd rid the evil beasts out of the land. Neither the sword would go through their land. There'd be no destruction. God would protect the land from any evil. And then he also said how you can get rid of your enemies. You shall chase your enemies. This means to run after with hostile intent. Pursue after. And they shall fall before you by the sword. That's all a type of what we do. We pursue our spiritual enemies, the evil spirits, with the spiritual sword, which is our mouth speaking forth, warring and driving out the enemies and casting them out and driving the enemy out, speaking against them, and they will be smitten. Five of you will chase a hundred, a hundred of you will put 10,000 to flight. Your enemies will fall before you by the sword. And he said, I'll have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Great blessings would come. This is what God wants. And all started because if they would hearken unto his voice, if they'd keep his commandments, they'd do them, they'd carry out the commands of the Lord and his statutes and keep the things that he says, then these blessings would come upon them. Over in Numbers, chapter 8, verse 7. Thus shall you do unto them, this is talking about the priests when they got cleansed. They were to be cleansed and course that's the result we want to see the cleansing occur in our life to cleanse them they were to sprinkle the water of purifying this was actually the sin offering the word means the sin offering and they were to shave all their flesh and they were to wash this is the word of washing by a fuller it's the way you pronounce it actually in the hebrew which is one who would wash things white as snow there'd be absolutely no no impurities in it whatsoever, and so make themselves clean. As you and I do the word, God will accomplish this in our life and bring us to that place of being clean and holy before him. We're going to have to confess our sin. The water of purifying speaks of the sin offering, which in the New Testament, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Shaving the flesh means we crucify the flesh. We cut off the flesh. We do not let the flesh operate. We mortify the deeds of the body. And we go through the cleansing process, spiritual washing of all of the garments, getting rid of everything, all the filthiness of the flesh. We put off every work of the flesh and we cast out all the evil spirits in order to be set free. As you do that, what's gonna be the result of you doing the word? You're gonna be clean. You're gonna be holy before the Lord. And that's what he wants. He wants every one of us to be cleansed. And that's how you bring forth more fruit, remember, in John 15. And then come to the place of abiding so you can bring forth much fruit in your life. Another thing we see in Numbers chapter 32. Numbers chapter 32 over in verse 20. Moses said to them, if you will do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war... We've got to get armed in the New Testament, put on the whole armor of God through the word in our heart, the word in our mind, the word in our mouth, the word directing our steps, and we engage in the spiritual warfare. We 
which means we're going to engage the enemy and attack all the evil spirit's workings in our life. As we do so, he said, if you'll go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he'd driven out his enemies from before him. And remember, that's how they went to possess the promised land, the physical promised land, the type of the spiritual promised land, which are the promises of God that you and I are to go possess. So they had to go attack their enemies with warfare to drive them out to possess the land. You and I have to cast out all the evil spirits to drive them out of us to be able to possess the promises of God in our life. And so the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and the land shall be your possession. Which is again the type of us possessing the promises in our life. Notice, if they'd obey, they'd be guiltless. That means that if we don't obey and enter into spiritual warfare and drive out the enemies and possess the, inherit the, plan the inheritance and the land, all the promises, we're guilty. We're guilty of not doing what God tells us to do. If we don't put on the whole armor of God and enter into the war, we're sinning. And we know that because it goes on and says, if you will not do so, if you won't get armed, if you won't enter into the spiritual warfare, if you won't go and fight against these enemies and drive them out, behold, you've sinned against the Lord. We must understand that people that won't enter into spiritual warfare and conquer their enemies are sinning against the Lord because they're not driving them out doing what God has commanded them. Be sure your sin will find you out. God expects us to do what he says. Well, the people, they understood this, and they said in verse 25, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commandeth. They are committed that they're going to do it. That's what you and I must do. Get the armor of God on, engage in the warfare, conquer the enemies, drive them all out. You will see that you will possess the promises of God and you will not be guilty. Instead, you have been shown to be obedient to carry out what the Lord wants. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them. We're taught the word to do the word. Not taught so we get a bunch of knowledge and then decide whether we're going to do it or not. No. God expects us to do everything that we're hearing. That you may live, it's going to bring life. That you may go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers gives you. So God's word is coming to you and God expects you to do it so that you will have his life and you will go in and you will possess the promised land. Which again, that's a type of you possessing the promises of God in your life. We see over in verse 6, Keep therefore and do them. Talking about, again, his commands and his statutes, the things that he tells us to do. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. People that hear and do the word, it'll produce spiritual understanding and wisdom in you. You need spiritual understanding and wisdom. In the measure that you're hearing and doing the word is the measure that God will impart his spiritual understanding and wisdom unto you. Many Christians, they're not doers of the word. They don't have understanding or wisdom. They just go around doing everything in the flesh, trying to figure out what to do. And they, don't, they make a mess of things because they're not doing the word and getting the understanding and the wisdom from the Lord. He is our source and he will show you what to do in every situation. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Being a doer of the word, all these things are so important. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32. You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you, not a suggestion, a command. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. We see that many times. Don't turn to the left hand, right hand or the left. You've got to walk the straight way. Going to the right hand or going to the left is trying some other way or doing whatever you want to do instead of following the way of the Lord. There is only one way. It's a narrow way. We cannot walk whichever way we want. That's the broad way that leads to destruction. We must walk the narrow way. In fact, we even see it spoken again over in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 7 when they were going to possess the land. He said, Be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, 
which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. If you do, you're not going to prosper. But if you walk the straight and narrow way, then you will prosper whithersoever you go. God will prosper you. He wants to bless you and prosper your way in life. We also see back in Deuteronomy chapter 6. These are all tremendous blessings from doing the word. Now, he says, Hear therefore, Israel, observe to do it, that it may be well with you. If you do God's word, the promise is it will be well with you. And that you might increase mightily. God will increase you in every area of your life. You become strong, you become fruitful, you increase and abound. You'll see God's fruitfulness and His prosperity and blessing and all these things come forth in your life. God wants you to increase mightily. Many people, they're not increasing at all. They're barely holding on in their life. they got poverty, spiritual poverty or whatever, all kinds of problems going on. You do what God says, the promise is, it'll be well with you and you will increase mightily. That's what he wants for every single one of us in our life. Over in Deuteronomy 11, 22 and 23, he says, if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, diligently is important. If you're going to be a doer of the word, you need to be a diligent doer, not a casual doer, whatever seems, if it works in my life or fits into my lifestyle. No, that's not going to make it. Diligently keep all these commandments as I command you, and to do them, and to love the Lord your God, which you do when you keep his commandments, as it says in the New Testament. Walk in all his ways. That means you're a doer of the word. All these speak of you being a doer of the word. And cleaving unto him. You don't turn this way or that way. What's going to happen? Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. You shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. God would fight and drive out all their enemies. Notice, many people want to cast out the demons, but they wonder why they don't really get too far. Well, this shows there's some conditions beforehand, aren't there? diligently keeping the commandments of the Lord, doing them, loving the Lord your God, walking in His ways, cleaving unto Him. Those are conditions for God to start manifesting Himself. And then He promises to drive out the enemies out of the land here, which is driving out the enemies out of your life. Praise God. He will do that. Deuteronomy 12, verse 28. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, and it may go well with you. Again, we see that, being well. With thy children after thee forever. That means it will affect your seed, not just you. When thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. Because blessings come on you and your seed. But remember, disobedience will bring curses on you and your seed. That's why we've got to observe and do the word of God and carry it out. In fact, curses will come. Look at the, what it says in Deuteronomy 27, verse 26. The word says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of the law to do them. If you don't do the word, you're going to be cursed. You see, there's blessings and there's cursings. There isn't any middle ground. If you obey, blessings are going to come. If you don't obey, curses are going to come. There isn't any middle ground. Here, they'd be cursed if they would not confirm the words of the law and the way they confirmed it in their life was by doing it. That's the way you confirm your following in him in covenant relationship, by doing the word of the covenant that he's given unto you. In Deuteronomy 28, we see in verse 1, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's God exalting you. And all these blessings will come on thee and overtake thee, if, that's the condition, you hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Notice, the blessings will come on you and overtake you. You can't even get away from them. They'll catch you. But the other is all, 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 the opposite is obviously true. Deuteronomy 28, 15. It shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. You're not doing what he says. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, 
what's going to happen? All these curses will come on you and they're going to overtake you, which means you can't get away from them. You see, things just don't happen. The curse causeless shall not come. The Bible says so. It's over in Proverbs. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, well, things just must happen, I guess. No, not so. Proverbs 26, verse 2. The curse causeless shall not come. There's a cause for it. It may not be your sins. It could be inherited generational, or it could be your sins, or it could be victimization. But there's always a cause for a curse to come, just like there'll be a cause for the blessings because you have done something that is going to bring forth the blessings as you obeyed the Word of God. Over and back in Deuteronomy, we're looking at the great results of you being a doer of the Word consistently. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9, look at this one. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that you may prosper in all that you do. That's what we want. We want to prosper in everything that we do. Everything is seeing God's blessing upon it. We're seeing fruitfulness and blessing come in financially, in whatever area it might be in your life, in your work, anything that you do. He wants to prosper you. But there are conditions. It is to keep the words of the covenant. Things just don't happen unless there is a, something that has put it in motion to see it happen. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14 the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. We talked about this before. You need the word in your heart and the word also in your mouth. When that's so, you'll do it. You'll keep it before you. It'll be giving you the desires from your heart. You keep speaking it. You'll make sure you're not speaking other things. And what you speak is also going to be sown in your heart. Because remember, if you don't bridle your tongue, you'll deceive your own heart. So if you keep the word in your mouth, you won't deceive your own heart. And what's going to happen? If you've got the word in your heart continually and in your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth's going to be speaking. It's going to be giving you the motivation, desire. That's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing the word of God. And also, as you're doing the word of God, God of course, that keeps the word in the midst of your heart as it's in your mouth and in your heart as you keep speaking it. Over in Joshua, we looked at verse 7. And we saw that we're not to turn one way or the other, but another thing we want to point out is you and I are to be strong and very courageous to do the Word. Spiritual strength needs to come into you through the Word. And courage, you don't get discouraged. You take in courage. You choose to obey and do the things God says. God's Word will produce that. And you do all that He says. And what's He going to do? He's going to prosper you, as we saw. And then look what it says in verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Again, it's to be in your mouth. You're speaking it forth. You meditate there and day and night. It's something you're continually keeping before you in your mind and muttering it and thinking on it, meditating on it, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. You know, what are you thinking on? What's, what's going through your mind throughout the day? You know, are you thinking on how I can apply the word in my life? Or are you thinking on all these other things? No, we should be thinking about the word. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Success is guaranteed for those who will keep the word in their mouth, meditate on it, and do it. God will bring success in your life, and that's what he wants. Here's another one about prosperity. There's many that talk about prosperity. Many people try to do all these other things to prosper. They fail to realize, if I just do what the Word says, God would start prospering all the work of my hands and bringing all these blessings. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Walk in, all his, walk in his ways. Keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, his, his testimonies. It's written in the law of Moses. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Tremendous promises. You want to see God prosper you? Prosper in what you do, prosper in your job, bring forth blessings, bring forth promotion, all these kind of things, he will do it. We see another scripture in 2 Kings chapter 22. God will bring finances into the hands of those that are doers of the work of the Lord. 
it's talking about the finances here being delivered, finances that they had, the, the silver that they had. They were going to give it to those ones who were the doers of the work. Notice, let them deliver to the hands of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Let it give to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair, repair, repair the breaches of the house. Otherwise, the doers of the work, they were going to be used to bring the repair of things that are, where have been broken down. Well, God will do the very same thing. He'll repair spiritually the breaks, the breaches where the enemy has gotten in, the breaks, the ruptures, sin, of course, does that, and the damage has been done in the church, which is the house of the Lord. Finances are used for the propagation of the gospel, to bring forward materials and different things, to accomplish things in order to help people to get set free and come out of bondage. God, God will use people that are doers of the work. They're going to commit to do the work. He's going to bring finances into their hands for the propagation of the gospel. And that's what he wants. Same time, in this same chapter, the ones that won't do things are going to suffer instead. Here, later on, they discovered that their forefathers weren't doing what they were supposed to do. And look what it says, verse 13. Go ye, inquire the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that's found. They found this book, all these things they were to do, and their forefathers hadn't done it. For great is the wrath of the Lord that's kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book. Now, because of Josiah being walking in the ways of the Lord, God was merciful towards him, and none of this destruction came on him while he was the king. But it already was set in motion because of the sins of the forefathers, and it came on a succeeding group. So, to do according to all those written, they were supposed to do the word, but they didn't, so the wrath was released against them. See, curses will come on those that do not walk in the ways of the Lord. If you will walk in the ways of the Lord and be a doer of God's word, 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 9, he charged them, saying, Thus shall you do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. When you have God's word and you are doing it, you're going to be doing it and it will produce the fear of the Lord. You delight greatly, you're going to have the fear of the Lord. You walk in his ways, you're going to have the fear of the Lord, knowing that God's way is going to bring blessing. But if you don't walk in it, you're going to see cursing come. And you're going to be faithful. Doing the, those that do the word are going to be faithful. And faithfulness always precedes promotion. Many people want to get promoted. Think about it in the natural. Are you going to promote someone that doesn't show themselves to be faithful in their job? No way. You show faithfulness, and that guy can get promoted. And also with a perfect heart. The doers of the word will have the fear of the Lord before them. They will be shown to be faithful. They also will have a perfect heart before the Lord. God will take notice of it, and he will bless them and exalt them. Ezra chapter 7. Verse 10, Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. As you're a doer of the word, what's going to happen? It's going to get it into you to the point where you can teach others. God doesn't want you to just get the word and then just for yourself. He wants you to get it in you so you can teach others and help them so that they can walk in the ways of the Lord and come out of bondage and possess promises as well. God wants to use you to minister to others. We're to make disciples of all nations, remember? That's reaching out to people. as you're, What he's taught you, he wants you to teach others and help them to walk in the ways of the Lord. It's also interesting, though. Verse 26, it shows a judgment. It says, Whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, he will not obey. Let judgment be executed speedily upon him whether it be unto death or banishment or confiscation of goods or imprisonment, some kind of penalty was going to come on them. There will be curses that come when we don't do the law of God or else the law of the king, talking about we need to obey the laws of the land as well. If we don't, we will see curses that will come upon us. Another blessing that we see in Psalms 1, verse 2. Here, of course, the condition. His delight is in the law of the Lord, 
And in his law does he meditate day and night. We already saw that in Joshua 1 to cause the guy to prosper and be in good success. We see the same thing here. What's going to happen to the guy who's delights in the law of the Lord and he's meditating on it? He's thinking on it. He's doing it. He's carrying it out. He's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, fruitfulness in your life. His leaf also shall not wither. You're not going to see decay or withering in your life. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Again, your prosperity in life is all tied into you doing the word of God. We've seen that many times, haven't we? Psalms 31, verse 23. Oh, love the Lord, all you saints. How do we show we love the Lord? We walk in his ways and do his commandments. Who are the saints? The holy ones, the ones that are holy before the Lord, that are godly. For the Lord preserveth the faithful, who's faithful? When it's doing the word consistently, right? And plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. God will preserve and reward you. Rewards will come on those that are doers of the word. I mean, God takes notice of everything that you're doing. If you're not spending time getting the word in you and being a doer of it, what are you doing with your life? You know, and God takes notice of that. It means you're just wasting your time doing a bunch of things that are worthless. No. And remember, not only is this important for now, but also for the life to come. Remember, all that you're doing now is going to, but you're going to either be rewarded for or suffering loss in the life to come. It's not just living into this life. It's also sowing all the seeds for what, what all the things are going to happen for where we're going to be in the life to come. Psalms 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord. Do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and thou shalt be fed. You're going to dwell in God's promises, and you're going to be fed. That's a promise of physical provision as well as spiritual provision. You're going to be fed the things of God, physically and spiritually. Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. God wants you to delight to it. You never do things out of a have to. People that say, well, I have to do this, or I got to do this, or I guess I should do this. They're going nowhere. That's a, out of someone that's doing it because he, he doesn't, his heart's really not in it. He really doesn't have a desire to want to do it. You should be doing everything because you want to. Yea, thy law is within, this is in the midst of my inward parts. It says heart here, but this is not the heart, the word heart for in the Hebrew. It's the word lab. This instead is the word we're talking about inward parts. And what's that implying? What are the inward parts where the word gets written in us in the New Testament? In our heart and also in our mind. That's in that. And remember the word gets in your mind, comes the anchor of your soul. So you will delight to do the will as you have the word in the midst of your heart and mind. That means it's to get in your heart, but it's also in your mind. You should be, you should be thinking upon it. You've got to guard your mind and guard your heart. And you can't let double-mindedness get into you. You've got to guard that. People that are double-minded, they're, they're not have met the conditions to be delighting to do the will of God and see God bring forth promises. Psalm 60, verse 12. Through God, we shall do, you're going to be a doer of the word, you're going to do valiantly with strength and might, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Otherwise, you and I have a part to play, don't we? We shall do with strength and might valiantly. God is the one who's going to tread down our enemies and put them underfoot, but you have a part to play. You are going to engage in the warfare. You're going to fight the good fight. You're going to war the good warfare. You are going to be using spiritual might and force and strength and power to conquer the enemies as you put it in operation. Great blessings. You do what he says, he's going to put your enemies underfoot. Psalms 103, verse 17. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, have the fear of God, and his righteousness unto his children's children. As such, who's it going to be for? That keep his covenant 
and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Keeping the covenant, doing the commandments. See, the word of God is the word of the covenant. What happened when you got born again? You just didn't sign on the dotted line, get your ticket to heaven, and then go do whatever you want. No, you came into a covenant relationship. That is not declared many times when people lead them to be born again. You've got to realize, you are coming into a covenant relationship with God, which means God's word is going to be performed in your life, all these promises, if you meet your part, because there's two parties to the covenant. You've got to carry out your responsibilities. And that's what he's talking about here. The mercy of God that are new every morning will be for those who keep the covenant and do his commandments. Otherwise, mercy's not automatic, is it? Mercy's available. The mercies of God are new every morning. And now we can come boldly to the throne of grace and take hold of mercy, but you aren't going to be able to take hold of it if you're not keeping covenant and keeping the commandments of the Lord. Psalms 106 shows you another great benefit of doing the word. Verse 3, Blessed are they that keep just judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. You do what's right, you are going to be blessed. God's blessing comes on those who do the word of righteousness. Those who are doing the word of righteousness, it produces righteousness, and it brings forth blessings in your life. Psalms 143, verse 10. As you're doing the word, it's also going to train you up in the ways of the Lord. Teach me. This is the word lamad, which means to teach exercise in or to, tr to be trained in something. Otherwise, you just don't hear some things and got some knowledge. You're expected to do it, exercise in it, be trained in it, becomes a part of your lifestyle. You hear and do and hear and do and hear and do to be trained, right? Train me, essentially, to do thy will. Because you're going to hear and do and you're going to put it in operation. Thou art my God, thy spirit is good, lead me in the land of uprightness. Otherwise, the guy that gets trained, he's going to be led into the land of uprightness. Not just the guy that heard some things. The guy that's been doing it and has been exercised in it and trained up in it. Trained to do his will was the key for you to be able to go in and possess the promises of God. Over in Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do you want to get good spiritual understanding? You can't get it just because you want to get it. You get it because God's going to impart it to you. Why is he going to impart it to you? Because you're doing his commandments and you're submitting and carrying out the things that he tells you to do. You're being obedient to him. You can never get it in your own self. No. Good understanding of all those that do his commandments. You will get good spiritual understanding that is going to be revealed unto you. Tremendous blessings. And we need that to walk in his ways. The Bible says get wisdom and get understanding. They're the wisdom's the principal thing. So you walk in the ways of the Lord. Proverbs 11 Verse 17, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. So, if you're merciful, you're actually blessing yourself. You're doing good to your own soul. It's going to come back on you. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But he that's cruel troubles his own flesh. If you're cruel and mean, you're going to see it right come back on you. We want to be sure, sure that we're merciful. The blessed are the merciful. They shall obtain mercy, won't they? They'll see it come to pass in their life. God wants you also to be blessed in all the work of the Lord. We saw this verse before. Jeremiah 48, over in verse 10. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. The word deceitfully really means slack, laziness, slothful. Young's brings it out this way and all the other translations. They refer to it as being slack or slothful. If you do the work slothfully, you're going to be cursed. But if you do the work diligently, you're going to be blessed. Whatever you do, put your all into it. Don't do it halfway or half-hearted. I mean, if you're going to do it, let's do it, you know? <laughs> put yourself into it. 
That's how you see the benefits of anything that you do in life. That's what he wants. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Talking about fighting against the enemies. Well, our enemies are spiritual enemies. We're going to be cursed if we don't go after the enemies and drive them out by casting them out and using our authority to destroy the works of the enemy. Blessings come for those who do the work diligently, engage in the warfare. And that's what he wants for you in your life. Praise God. Over in the New Testament, Mark chapter 4, that is Mark. When you hear the word, what happens? The devil comes to try to take it out. Mark 4, 15. These are by the wayside where the word is sown. When they've heard, and it got sown in their heart, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was out of their, sown in their hearts. How can he take it away? If you didn't understand it, or if you didn't do what he says, he'll be able to take it out. This is why being a doer of the word is the key so you will not let the devil take it out. Just because you heard it doesn't mean it's still in your heart. Many people know some things, but the word's not in their heart, and they wonder why they don't have the motivation to do things, and they don't see any power coming out of them, and they don't see their faith operating at all and doing anything because the word got taken out of their heart. If you don't have the word in your heart, there's no way your faith is going to be put in operation in your life. So, you've got to be doing the word to keep it in your heart. Matthew chapter, that's it, Matthew now. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. If you're a peacemaker, you're a doer of things that cause peace. You'll be blessed. God doesn't want us to get into strife. Doesn't want us to get into retaliatory. Doesn't want us to get into negative things. He wants to be a peacemaker. We'll be called the children of God and see God's blessings come forth in our life. Or this actually means the sons of God. And you'll see something more about that in a little minute, in a minute. Over in Matthew 5, 19, he says, Whoso, who, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. You teach men so by what you're doing because people see what you're doing, so you're teaching people by your lifestyle as well as what you say. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, you're to do them and then teach them to others. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. God wants you to be a doer of the word and he wants you to get it into you so you can teach it to others so that you then can be considered or called great in, this, in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 44. Here's where Jesus brought forth the change from the Old Testament law to the New Testament law. Look what he says. Verse 43. He said, You've heard it been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. That's the Old Testament. Do we do that today? No. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. We now love our enemies. We bless them that curse us. We do good to them that hate us. We pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. You are not to be the vessel of retaliation. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. He is the judge. You give people what they have need of, God will take care of what they deserve. And they won't get away with anything, that's for sure. But you need to do these things. That you may become, get am I, the son, sons, this is sons, not children, it's the word huios, which means son, the sons of your father, which is in heaven. That's what he wants. And then he comes down to verse 48, and he tells you what's the result of all this, that you shall be perfect. This is not a, King James really messed up on this because it makes you think he's commanding you again now to be perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. It's not a command. Look what this word means when it says about being perfect. It is a future tense verb. The future tense would be, you shall be. It's not a command whatsoever. It's also an indicative mood, which is the mood of making a statement of fact, not an imperative mood of making a command. So it's not a command, it's a mistake. Of course, Young's corrects it. You shall therefore be perfect. 
Well, that's what it says. It's a flat statement, a future statement of fact. As your Father in the heavens is perfect. Why? Because if you love your enemies, you bless those that curse you, you do good to those that have done evil to you, you pray for those that persecuted you and despitefully used you, so that you might be a son of the Father, you'll be perfect, even as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Those that walk in these ways will be perfect, praise God. Tremendous blessing and promise. Matthew chapter 12, verse 48. Here he said, who's my mother and who are my brethren? He stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. Remember, disciples are hearers and doers of the word, aren't they? Remember what it says in John 8, 31? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. Behold, he says, my mother and my brethren, whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother, sister, and mother. What that tells you is who is the real family of God? Not just those that are born again, but those who are doing the will of the Father. They're continually doing the will of the Father as well. Subjunctive mood means whether they might do the will of my Father which is in heaven. Some of the other places where it's used talk about the present tense where it's continually doing this. And we saw that before. So, that also tells you something. You're not part of the family of God if you aren't a doer of the will of the Father. You might be born again, but you're really not a part of the family of God. And who are the ones, the real disciples, that continue in the Word, that do the Word? That's important. Another thing, if you're a doer of the Word, then you show the Lord that you really have made Him Lord over your life. And of course, He's going to bless you. Look what He says. He makes this statement to them in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things which I say? Well, someone gives, tells you what to do and you don't pay attention and do anything to them? Do, do what they tell you to do? Could they really be your Lord? No. Those who do the word, he's Lord to them. Those that do not do the word, he is not their Lord. It doesn't matter what they've done. Very important. We go on. We also see those who are hearers and doers of the word, hearing and doing the word, he's building his spiritual house. And he's the one who's laying the foundation, hearing and doing, builds your house, lays the foundation on a rock where you'll not be shaken at all, you'll not be, sh could not, you, the enemy will not have strength or mighty force to shake you at all. And this really means to overthrow in this sense, to overthrow you, because it's founded upon a rock. How do, you get the, how do you get this foundation? By hearing and doing the word, laying the foundation, building your spiritual house. And the measure that you've heard and done the word consistently is the how you have laid the foundation and built the spiritual house in your life. But the guy who hears and doesn't do it, doeth not, he's like building a house without a foundation. You will not have the foundation laid, and when the tax come, you will have a fall, and your ruin of the house will be great. Many Christians see a lot of destructive things and ruin occurring in their life. <laughs> That's not God's will. But why is it happening? Because they haven't been a hearer and a doer of the word. They never laid the foundation, therefore the enemy could come in and just wipe them out. You've got to have the word in you, the strength to be able to resist all of the attacks of the enemy that would come against you. Another thing that we see, doers of the word get revelation. They really come to the light. Look what it says here, John 3, 21. He that doeth truth, not just heard, not just studied, not just seen it, no, present tense, continuously doing truth, the word is truth comes to the light. He's going to come to the light. He's going to get, otherwise, you, as you hear and do the word, God's going to bring light to you as you are doing it consistently. Revelation. That his deeds may be made manifest, that they're wrought in God. Of course, they'll be worked in God. You'll see God bringing forth the promises, the fruit, the blessing, the result of it in your life. 
In John chapter 7, another thing, we talked about this one once before, but it's important, the result of it. You won't be deceived if you do the word, if you set your will to do the word when you hear it. John 7, 17, if any man will, that's the main verb, to do, you kind of lose that when it says will do as will, but the word do here is an infinitive in the Greek. This is why Young's brings it out. Anyone may will to do his will. That's correct what it says in the Greek. He sets his will that I'm going to do the will of God, which is the word. He's going to know of the doctrine, whether it's of God or whether I speak of myself. Because you're going to, first of all, know it's in line with the word, and you're going to be doing that word and applying it in your life and see the results and the fruit of it. And if not, you're going to know it's not of the Lord whatsoever. See, God gives revelation to those that what? Are going to do the word, doesn't he? The ones that are going to do it. Not the ones that are just casual, want to hear things. They don't get any, hardly any revelation at all. It's when you take hold of it, to you set your will that you're going to do it. That's the one that is going to get revelation of the ways of the Lord. Luke chapter 6, verse 31. Tremendous blessings from doing the word. As you would or will that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. How do you want people to treat you? I want them to love me. Well, then love others. If you don't walk in love toward them, why should anything come back to you? What you sow, you're going to reap. You sow to the Spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. What you sow, you sow the wrong things, you're going to reap destruction. You sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption, as the Bible says. So the blessing is, whatever you do to others is what God's going to bring those same things back to you. It may not necessarily be from that person, but it'll be from somebody. Give out what you have, want to come back to you, which means you're always going to give out good things. You give out good things, God will bring good things back unto you. Praise the Lord. Another thing we see, you and I are going to do the works of God. John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. You're going to do the same works. And you're going to have a whole lifetime to do them. Greater works, more in quantity, than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. You're going to be able to carry out the ministry of the Lord, do the works of God. You're going to be blessed for doing the works of God and, of course, ministering to people in their life. Another thing we see, you got to know that everything that you do, it's God working in you and doing it through you. You do nothing of yourself by your own power. You're simply obeying the word, doing it, and putting God in operation. John 15, verse 5. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Well, how does this happen? For without me you can do nothing. The Lord in you is the one who brings it forth through the word that you are hearing and doing. God wants you to know that he will bring things forth. You can do nothing. Remember, Jesus, even his testimony was in John 5, 19. The Son can do nothing of himself. Now, Jesus was God in Christ, and yet he did nothing of himself. What he sees the Father do, he just followed what the Father told him to do, and just carried them out. What things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. He just simply was doing the things that he was observing and what he was told to do. Verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing. You know, don't ever think that you... Can any, ever, any of us ever get pride or think that we're something and we accomplish something? No way. God does it all. You do nothing. You're just simply a vessel. Don't ever think that, oh, look what I did. <laughs> you got a pride spirit and you're just totally deceived. God's the one who does it. As I hear, I judge my judgment just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father that sent me. And that's what we do. We seek the will of the Father. John chapter 6, down here in verse 38. I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. 
Well, it's the same thing. You came down from heaven too, because you're born from where? From above. You've got a brand new spirit that's come into you. And what are you to do? The same thing. You don't do your own will. You do the will. You're an ambassador for Christ, and you carry out the things that he wants you to do. You're going to be blessed if you do it. We see another place in John 8, 28. Here he says, again, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, then you'll know that I am he, that I do nothing of myself. That's why don't do anything of yourself. Do well what God wants you to do. As my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. As you're being taught by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father that's coming to you, you're going to speak those things. See? Verse 29, He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. That is a great testimony. That's the testimony God wants for you. That you do always the things that please the Lord and carry out the things he wants. John 15, verse 14, we see another blessing. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. We'll be God's friend. That tells you something. You're not automatically God's friend. Just because you're born again doesn't mean you're his, you're his friend. You're his friend if you do. And not that you just did it once, but you are continually maybe doing, present tense, the commands of Jesus Christ. You'll be his friend. And when you're God's friend, <laughs> he's going to be blessing you. That's for sure. Another thing you must realize, and we looked at this scripture before, Acts 26, verse 20. He showed first of them at Damascus and at Jerusalem through all the coast of Judea and the Gentiles to the Gentiles. They should repent, turn to God, and do works meet or showing forth repentance. Otherwise, those people that are really repenting are going to show it forth. I hear it all the time. People say, well, I repent. Yeah, yeah I repented. And then they're doing it again. And they're doing it again. And they're doing it again. Did they really repent? I mean, it might have been momentarily, but it really wasn't true repentance. Because true repentance with God is to change your mind and you don't do it anymore. You don't walk in it anymore. You turn away from it. Therefore, God wants us to show, do the works, showing forth repentance, works of faith, works of obedience to the word, carrying that out. Being a doer of the word will cause you to show forth, you'll have that new fruit. You'll show forth real repentance because you're doing the things that God wants you to do. Praise God. Another thing we see, and this is another scripture we saw, but it's another great blessing. Look at this principle that's brought out here in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, has power. This is the word exousia, which means authority, not power. The word is dunamis, if it was power, but it's exousia. Has authority over his own will, and has so decreed or determined and resolved in his heart that he will keep his virgin doeth well. You want to overcome any areas of sin? First of all, you've got to get steadfast in your heart, the word in your heart. And you've got to realize you have authority over your own will because the devil tries to get to your will. Your will has to yield to the devil to do something that's sinful. You need to decree in your heart because you have authority over your will. Decree in your heart because you've got the word in your heart. Make a quality, firm decision in your heart. You're not going to walk in that sin any longer. Or you're going to keep your virgin. You're not going to give place to that in your life. If you've got some sin areas in your life, you need to get the word in you and get steadfast in your heart. You've got to realize you can never say, the devil made me do it. No, the devil influenced you and you yielded to him with your will to do it. You know, we can't be passing the buck game. That's what, you know, Adam did. The woman, you know, you gave me. She did it. Oh, it's a serpent, you know. He beguiled me. Always oh, passing the buck instead of taking responsibility. That doesn't make it. We must take responsibility. 
get steadfast in our heart, decree and determine in our heart, I have authority over my will and I'm not going to yield to this any time anymore. That's going to be because you have the word in you <clears throat> and you choose to do the things that God wants. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Another one. If you're a doer of the word, you'll walk in the spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh is Lust is against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, so these are contrary the one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would or will. Therefore, what's the answer? Well, the flesh is always there, and it's always got its lusts and desires. So what do you got to do? You can't let yourself go in that direction. Instead, you're going to go in another direction, because they're contrary. But the answer is, walk in the spirit according to the word, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When it says you shall not, it's not the best translation here because it's a subjunctive mood verb, means you might not. Otherwise, the condition for you not fulfilling, it's a conditional statement, the subjunctive mood. So what it's saying is walk in the spirit and you might not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Meaning, you will fulfill the lust of the flesh unless you meet the condition. And what's the condition so you don't? Walk in the spirit. You don't walk in two directions at the same time. I mean, I'm not walking north and south at the same time. I'm going one way or the other, <laughs> you know. I'm going to walk in the Spirit according to the Word. If you do what the Word says, you won't walk after the ways of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit is doing what the Word says. Put the Word first place and walk in it, and that is so important. We see great rewards that will come for those that are doers of the Word. Ephesians 6, verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are ma your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleaders, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Anything you do should always be doing it from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. In your work. You do it as to the Lord, not unto men. If you do everything in life as to the Lord, you're going to be blessed. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same he'll receive of the Lord. You're going to get blessed by the Lord if you do things unto him, whether it be bond or free. God wants us to do the things that he says so he can bring blessings. We see over in Colossians, similar, chapter 3. Verse 22 and following. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, you know, just doing whatever you want, as men pleasers, trying to get favor, see? This means courting favor, trying to get favor, you know. I'll scratch your back so you scratch mine type of thing. But in the signals of heart fearing God, I'm going to do it unto God, I'm going to do it right, and I'm not going to compromise anything. Whatsoever you do, do it, this means out of the soul, not out of the heart. I don't know why they translate it that way. Out of the soul. Here it shows you. This is the word suke, which is the word for soul. Out of the soul as to the Lord, not unto men. The key is everything you do, do it unto the Lord. If you do it unto men, you're going to start having some selfish interests and see whether they're going to, you know, how they're going to treat me. You always do things right if you do it unto the Lord, and it's irrespective about what men's attitudes are or not. That's important. Knowing of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Notice, when you are doing things unto the Lord, you are serving the Lord. And you are going to get a reward. You'll get the reward of the inheritance. At the same time, he that doeth wrong, he's going to receive for the wrong he has done. You're not going to get away with it. There's no respect to persons. You do it in the Lord, you're going to be blessed by the Lord. You don't do it on the Lord, you know, and you do wrong, you're going to see a judgment. There is no respect of persons. So important. God wants you to be a doer. Look what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4. We have confidence in the Lord touching you. Why do they have confidence in them? That you both do... present tense, are doing, 
That means any of these guys are doing this now. And will do, future tense, the things that we command you. Otherwise, they had such confidence in them that they had a track record of doing things and also saw the commitment that they were going to do it continually. Well, that's something you can count on, isn't it? Someone's going to do it, and then they flake out or whatever all. Or they, you, know, you don't know whether they're going to be around to carry something out for what you need them to do. But the guy, if God sees someone who's doing and will do it, he knows because of their commitment and their attitude and their faithfulness in their heart. That's going to be, you're going to have confidence in that person. That's what God's looking for. He wants to have confidence in you. That's because, and that shows faithfulness, which is what precedes promotion. He has confidence in you. He knows what you'll do. 2 Thessalonians 3.13 Brethren, be not weary. Don't get wearied out, exhausted, tired out, lose heart. This all means in well-doing. The enemy will try to wear you down. Do not let it happen. You always do things to the Lord, you'll never get tired out or wearied out. If you've got your eyes on yourself or men or whatever, all you can get wearied out real quick or get discouraged or whatever. So many pastors, they, you know, they've gone out of the ministry because they obviously weren't doing everything unto the Lord and had their eyes on Him. They, they must have got affected by themselves or what people did or whatever. They got their eyes on the people. It's a mistake. You do everything under the Lord. You'll never get wearied out. And of course, the enemy works to do that at you. Tremendous blessings when we do things right. Doing the Word means your eyes are always on the Lord, isn't it? Hebrews 13, 16. To do good and to communicate, which is fellowship, reaching out to others, to fellowship with them, minister to them. Forget not, with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Anytime you do things unto the Lord, do the things that He wants you to do, it's a sacrifice. It's costing you something. It's you putting some effort out from you. And that's what a sacrifice is. A sacrifice is you giving forth something from you. God is well pleased with it. He'll bless you. Verse 21 says, He'll make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well pleasing in His sight. When God finds someone like that, He's going to use you mightily. Here, the, he worked in the person to make him perfect in every good work. They were doing his will, and he was working in them all the things that was well-pleasing in his sight. You're a vessel for God to work through. He's going to do great things in you and through you. Tremendous blessings. James chapter 1, verse 25. Whoso looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. That's a doer of the word consistently. He's not a forgetful here, but he's a doer of the work. He's working the word in his life. This man shall be blessed in his doing, actually, is what the word means. You're going to be blessed. You're going to see God's tremendous blessings that are going to come upon you. Over in 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election, this means choosing, sure. What's that imply? Your calling and choosing is not sure unless you make it sure. You're going to make it sure. For if you do, again, this is present tense, ongoing action, these things, you shall never fall. So how do I make my calling and being selected sure? I don't fall. How will I never fall if I'm doing what the Word says in all areas? And if you go back and look at the context, it's talking about you operating in faith, moral excellence or moral goodness is what virtue is, according to knowledge, the knowledge of God, temperance, control of the flesh, so you don't yield to the sin in the flesh, patience, which is steadfastness in your mind, so you're making sure your mind is choosing the way of the Word because you've got the Word in your mind, Godliness, that's the one who's reverent and submitted unto God and hearing and doing His Word. You're operating in godliness. Brotherly kindness, you're walking in love towards the brotherhood and you're showing love towards everybody else. Those are the conditions. You do those things, 
then you're going to make your calling and election sure, and you will not fall. You will not make any mistakes whatsoever. First John, a couple more before we finish here. First John, verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If you ask any Christian, do you have fellowship with the Lord? You know, oh yeah. Are you walking in any sin and darkness? If you are, God says we lie. We're not doing the truth. We don't have fellowship with him. Can, can you have fellowship with God if you're walking in sin? No. Because sin breaks fellowship with him. 1 John 1 is all about that. Restoring your fellowship by confessing your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants us to do these things. If you and I will abide in the word of God, what's going to happen? He that doeth the will of God abides forever. That means it has eternal ramifications. This is why you can't walk after the world. The ways of the world is in the context. You're not supposed to love the, the world or the things that are in the world. If you have the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. You're in trouble. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, is not of the Father, it's of the world. Run by the devil, the God of this world, this age. The world passes away. It's not going to be around. But the guy who does the will of God is going to abide forever. 1 John 3, 22. We talked about this once before. You pray for an accurate New Testament prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus and bring the Scripture promise, which is really making a demand to what's due you, which is what the word iteo, the word for ask, means. And then you take hold of him well, that's the way I'd pray, but why do I see prayer get results? Because you met conditions. It's not just praying in line with what the Word says. You've got to meet the conditions. Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. So I thought God heard all the prayers. Nope. Everybody thinks out there that God hears their prayers automatically. <laughs> They're kidding themselves. Look at 1 Peter 3.12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. Whose prayers? The righteous. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Can you have Christians doing evil? Sin? Sure. Is the Lord hearing their prayers? No. they got unrighteousness. God wants us to walk in His ways. One last scripture. And this again shows the eternal ramifications of being a doer of the word. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that do. This again is a present tense verb. Doing continuously his commandments. The commandments of Jesus Christ. Carrying out the New Testament commandments that we're under. That. Young's brings out the correct word order. That the authority shall be theirs under the tree of life. That's what it means, because the word here, right, is exousia, meaning authority. What that means is, the only reason you can get to the tree of life is because you've got authority to get to the tree of life. And the only reason you're going to have authority to get to the tree of life is because you're right with God, because you do the commandments of the Lord. Otherwise, you won't have any authority. Because you're, if you, don't have, you aren't right with God, you have no authority to do the things of God and be able to enter into them. So the authority will be theirs to the tree of life. And by the gates they'll enter into the city, talking about the city, the, the New Jerusalem. This has eternal ramifications of eternal, everlasting life with the Father and with Jesus. Praise God. Doing His commandments. Tremendous blessings. So tonight we've seen how important it is and the blessings that will come, all these different things that we have seen from the blessings that, that come by doing the Word. You'll be accepted by God. He'll bring to pass what He's spoken about you. Healing, obedience, blessings coming upon you, angels being enemy to your enemies. You'll have a right heart stirring you up to do the things God wants. You'll be sanctified. You'll be safe. You won't be cursed. You'll be cleansed as a priest. You'll be guiltless in possessing the promises. 
The word will be in your mouth and heart continually. You'll be strong and courageous. You'll have good understanding and wisdom. You won't be turning to the right or the left. You'll be increased mightily and it'll be well with you. God will drive out your enemies. You'll have good success and prosper, which we saw time and time again. You'll see God will bring finances into your hand to, for the ministry to minister to others. You'll have the fear of the Lord, be faithful, have a perfect heart. You could even be great if you teach others and do the word. You'll possess the promises. The word will be in your heart and mind. You'll tread down the enemy. You'll have mercy. You'll be righteous. You'll be trained to do the will of God. You'll have a good understanding. You'll do good to your soul. You'll do the work of the Lord diligently and be blessed. God will uh, bring blessings upon you in all kinds of ways. You won't let the devil take the word out of your heart. You'll be the sons of the Heavenly Father and be perfect as He's perfect. You'll be a true disciple and a part of the real family of God. You'll show Jesus really is your Lord and you'll build your house on the rock. You won't fall. You will not be shaken by the enemy whatsoever. You'll have light and revelation. You'll know the true doctrine and won't be deceived by the false teachings. Whatever you sow is going to come back to you because God will bring it back. That's the way it works. Whatever you give out is going to come back unto you. You're going to do the mighty works of the Lord. You're going to do nothing yourself, remember. You're going to be a friend of God. You'll gain the spiritual understanding. You'll have true repentance in your life, too, because you'll be doing the thing. You won't be walking on these ways any longer. And you'll set your will, the authority over your will, that you won't walk in sin. You can conquer sin by just doing the word consistently. Many people try to cast out the demons to get free of a sin area, and they don't do the word to, in order to establish the truth in them and bring forth fruit. You can cast them out till you're blue in the face. If you don't correct your problems and do the word, forget it. <laughs> in fact, you're gonna, they're going to be coming back with seven more wicked to themselves. Remember, we, we, of course, we encourage deliverance continually, but you've got to correct all the problems and get the word in you. Otherwise, you're going nowhere. We're going to be rewarded. We're going to walk in the Spirit. We won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We're going to be shown to be faithful. We're not going to ever get weary or give up. We're going to be performing the sacrifices well-pleasing unto God. We're going to see Him accomplish His great work in our life. We're going to, all these tremendous blessings that come that He's going to bring forth. We'll never fall. We'll make our calling and election sure. We'll, we won't walk in darkness or sin. We'll abide forever. We'll see our prayers get a response. We'll have authority of the tree of life. All these blessings, if that doesn't put a strong motivation in you to be a doer of the word, there's something wrong. Because this has eternal ramifications and also affects you in your overall everything. Peace, prosperity, blessing, healing, promotion, faithfulness, all the different things that God will bring forth. And the blessings coming on you and overtaking you in your life. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you. I see that I must be a continual doer of the Word of God. And I see the great results that will come forth as I am a doer. I put the Word of God first place in my life. I will be a hearer and a doer of it. And I thank you for all these results, all these blessings coming to pass in my life. And I will have eternal life. Thank you for bringing forth these promises as I meet the conditions of hearing and doing the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Certainly an important